EA Interviews, Episode 90. Inspiration, Transformation, Success Stories, and the Imperfect Action Round. Seven days a week. Join Mario Ficini for today's Expert Authority Effect interview. Have you ever wanted to perform at the highest level? Have you ever wanted to perform at your peak, if you will? Well, I have Richie Contartesi with us today, and he is a number one best-selling author. He played football professionally, and now he speaks to all around the country, inspiring people like he inspired me when I met him in person. And I got to tell you, his story is incredible. How he treats people is incredible, and he is so just down to earth. He's He's what we all strive to be in all areas of life, and I'm very excited to have him on. I'm going to bring him up right after we thank our sponsor. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five-plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Richie Contartesi. Richie, how are you doing today? I am doing excellent. How are you doing, Mario? Glad to be here. I'm feeling great. Awesome. I'm feeling great. I'm excited to have you here. I'll never forget when you were on stage. And honestly, you're amazing. Oh, and thank you. <laughs> that's why That's why I invited you on the show. I wanted to share you with my audience, and I know they're going to get a lot of value out of this. So tell us a story. How did all this start? I mean, what made you want to get into business? Yeah. So, well, here's the thing, Mario, is when I was at Ole Miss, I understood what it felt like to be overwhelmed. I understood what it felt like to, to have anxiety. I understood what it felt like to see uh, other people around me doing really well. And there were some days like, I, I would just be like, how can I perform better? How can I be the best version of myself? How can I be literally uh, my best? And, and so when I graduated from uh, Ole Miss, I went on and got into the business world and got a job. And uh, I did well, and I actually met an author, and he said, "Richie, you know, I love your story. You've gotta, you've gotta, you gotta write a book." And I was like, "I gotta write a book. I don't know how to write a book. I failed fifth grade because uh, I couldn't read and write." Um, and so uh, I said, "You know what? Let me let me take let me take his." his uh, expertise. And he said, Hey, Richie, I, I want to help you. And so he was one of the first mentors that I had and he guided me and helped me through that process. And after I wrote the book, I said, you know what? I have, I have this experience and I know other people are feeling the same way. And I'm saying to myself, like, how can I help other people break through overwhelm? How can I help other people become the best version of themselves? How can I help other people achieve goals that everyone else would say to them? That's impossible. And I, and I just kind of went on this journey of saying, hey, you know, I, I understand what it feels like. And so I started out in the youth market and I spoke at high schools and, and colleges and really helping to prepare them for, uh, for life, for business, for whatever that was. And over time, it kind, of, it kind of evolved. And I had an organization that said, hey, we want you to come and, and speak at our company. And so I went and did that and, and started in the motivational and the inspirational realm. And what I found was because I spent five years speaking with millennials and Gen Z and preparing them for life and for business and for the workforce, it only made sense to continue that and help organizations bring in the younger generation. How do we engage them, right? How do we develop peak performers and uh, how do we keep them? How do we keep them from leaving? And so it, that's kind of how it all evolved and came about. Well, it's such a great story because I remember sitting in the audience and how I felt. And when you were talking about your private clients, I was going, I'm curious what he's doing for them. <laughs> but I love how you're going with the younger generation to turn them into peak performers because I know businesses nowadays, they're looking for that top talent. But the challenges businesses have nowadays are retaining it. Yeah. Because there's a difference from, let's say, the wiser generation to the millennials and beyond that. So tell me, how are you helping them and how are you bridging this gap to make it cohesive for everyone? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a great question, Mario. So they're, they're, you're right. Retention is definitely a, a big issue. There's the engagement side of things is, is something that's big. And then it's also how do we take the young talent that we have 
and turn them into all stars is what I like to say, or impact players. How can we help them become the best version of themselves, not just professionally, but personally? So a lot of organizations, they drive their people to be great professionals. Professionally, but what they don't understand is other generations are different than millennials. I'm a millennial. Other, they're they're different than Gen Z in the fact that there's you have to split development of the work of the workforce of their team into two areas, and that's personally, and they and you have to develop them professionally. And what a lot of organizations do is they combine the two. And they kind of do a little bit of personal, but they do majority of professional. And we develop differently. So in order to engage the younger workforce, in order to develop and keep them, we have to, uh, there's, we have to separate personal and professional. And that's why I created the performance booster framework. And that is, is a, is a, a system and a process that you can follow to really engage them, develop them, and obviously keep them. So. How vital would you say it is to be doing both sides of it? What are the downsides of doing one over the other instead of in tandem? Yeah. So, I mean, I I think to me, when you look at it, like if you're pounding somebody's with strategies and the techniques and the, like, how do you like all the little nuances of doing something? That's great. But we're so much more focused, especially the younger generation is so much more focused on impact, so much more focused on on how can we help not only ourselves, but the organization and other people where it's different than before. We want to know why are we doing this as, as, as a younger, why am I doing this? Why do I want, what's my why, right? And then the organization, if they're not focused, they the organization has to say, why are we doing what we're doing? So the younger generation can say, hey, I'm doing this not only for my purpose, but because I'm able to make a bigger impact on others. There's a cause that I'm following. There's a mission that I'm following. And that's where a lot of organizations fall short is they, they even though they may help them professionally, there's no cause, there's no mission, there's no purpose. And it's really hard if you want to make an impact, if you don't even know how you're making an impact. So that's one of the, the biggest areas that I see falling short. And if you want to keep people... Um, you have to help your, your, your team find their purpose, but you also have to show them the impact that they're making and they have to be able to follow something. I've heard that you can't be a winner in one thing and a loser in another. What are your thoughts? A winner in one thing and a loser in another. Interesting. I mean, I, I don't know how to take that. I would say I, I'm kind of like the person where I, I hate losing more than I do winning. Mm-hmm. Um, so like when we go on the competitive side of things, like I'm, I, I would much rather not lose than win. I know that kind of sounds iffy, but like, that's something I think about is like, I hate to lose more than I love to win. If that kind of makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. Why don't you uh, tell us about how you use that thought process to, uh, get on Ole Miss? Oh man. Well, when I had the opportunity, so I didn't actually come out of high school and just get an opportunity at Ole Miss. It didn't work that way. Um, my goal as a little kid, How come? go ahead. How come? I thought that's, you know, <laughs> all, all successful people, they just want to do something and they sign up and that's it. There's no hard work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, so, all right, that's a really good point because anything worthwhile, anything that you have to strive and push yourself towards the, the feel, the competition is absolutely fierce. Like, I don't know how else to say that, but it is absolutely fierce. And so I, I believe the fact that I wanted I didn't want to lose so bad. And obviously I have my why and purpose and we can get into that, but like, I didn't want to lose so bad. I wanted it so bad that, you know, I, even though when I came out of high school, I didn't go directly to Ole Miss. I went to Jacksonville university. It's a small school in Florida. And my first year there, I was actually cut. I was actually cut from the school. And in that moment, uh, Mario, I had a decision to make, right? I could quit, throw in the towel Or I could say, you know what? I'm not going to lose. I'm going to follow my heart. I'm going to follow what it is that I really, really, really want to do. And from a relationship that I built when I was 12 years old, I started building with a man named Kyle Strong, um, my hero. He's absolute. I mean, he was my hero at 12. Uh, He still is today. And 
uh, when I got cut from Jacksonville University. So I, I met him when I was 12, broke my arm. It's funny, adversity leads to this. Broke my arm and I met Kyle. He was a personal trainer at the time. And after that personal training session, it was about three months, we went our separate ways. And as I was going into my senior year of high school, um, I was walking up the steps into the film room and I saw a man drawing plays on the court, uh, board, a coach that I had never seen before. And when he turned around, it was Kyle Strong. And I was like, Kyle Strong, and where'd you come from? And just like that, he was right back into my life. He was a new coach on the team. And we continued to build that relationship. And he saw my love for the game. He saw my, how, I, how I cared about the team. He saw the intangibles. And I broke my leg during my senior year. And, and again, he got to see how I handled adversity. He got to see how much I actually cared about the team, the love for the games, the support. And a year and a half later, when I got cut from Jacksonville University, I found out that Kyle actually had just gotten an internship uh, for the football team at Ole Miss. And I called Kyle and I was like, Kyle, can I get in? Can I play football at Ole Miss? And without any hesitation, he said, Richie, if there was one person that I would help get in, it was you. And uh, it was actually three weeks till school started and he was able to get me in academically and literally one tryout. I will say this, the point that I want to make with that is that you don't have to be this extraordinary talent. The reason that I ended up getting that tryout is because I had Kyle and it was because he went to the coaching staff and he said this, he said, give Richie a chance. And here's why he's not the most talented. He's not the biggest. I promise you that. And he's, he's, he's not going to blow everybody away, but what he will do is he'll make everybody around him better. He'll make the team better. And the coaches said, you know what? We'll give him one, one hour tryout. And that's when it all began. So with the perseverance and heart, it's going to win every time. Yeah, I mean, I really, I truly believe that. I, I think there's, there's obviously things that can happen, right? Like, and, and I, I'm, I like being real. Like, one of my goals was to play in the NFL, and I didn't achieve that goal. But the person that I became along the way has allowed me to do all. Has allowed me to write a book. Has allowed me to open a gym. Has allowed me to um, be here on this podcast. Allow me to speak to some really big organizations and have the opportunity to impact other people and help other people. And, and, and like I said, you're not going to achieve everything, but perseverance will take you and create you and develop you into a person with very little limits. And there's obviously everybody has limitations. There's always things that are going to hold us back from achieving certain things. But the person you become is so much more powerful and will allow you to even make bigger impact in other areas that you didn't even know at the time. And so that's a big point that I think is really important to understand is I can't sit here and say that, and, I, and, and just in real, like I, I, I do believe perseverance will take you places you'll never imagine and, and you'll make bigger impacts because your doors will open up. But I also am a realist in saying there's certain things, obviously, that even with perseverance, you won't achieve, but just know in your mind that the person that you become is so much more powerful and it's going to open up other doors that are going to allow you to do some amazing things. And that's one of the biggest learning lessons that I took from it, Mario. I would, I would have to agree with you because I've done video as long as I can remember. And this wasn't even the way I'm doing this now wasn't even a thought in my mind. And we were actually producing other people's shows. And I was like, not yet, not yet, not yet. And then it clicked and it had everything to do with me being ready for it, not the technical, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Because pl plugging in lights, cameras, and microphones isn't that difficult, but the perseverance you need in the stick with itness. I mean, you're, you're going to get knocked down, whether it's on the football field, in business, in life or whatever, but are you going to get back up again? Absolutely. A hundred percent. Why don't we talk about your book? How has writing the book helped your business? Yeah. So I think the book to me and all, and all, uh, transparency, it really hasn't been this, like I wrote this book and all of a sudden my life's changed. It's just the reality for me. And I know there's some people who've written books and, and their life has changed drastically and that just hasn't been what it is for me. I think it's definitely how I look at it is it's helped a lot of people. 
And I look at it as something that can open doors. But I wouldn't say that for me personally, the book has been this, you know, uh, dramatic, uh, you know, life changing kind of uh, thing. I think personally, it's been great because, you know, for me to be able to say after failing fifth grade with dyslexia and ADHD and being told I couldn't read, read and write to me, it was a big accomplishment. And I, and I'm, I'm happy for, I'm proud of it, but I wouldn't say it's been this like, you know, it's exploded my business or anything like that. I think it's been something that I know that after an event, um, you only have a short period of time to keep people engaged and to continue that impact. And I think that's one thing that it's done is it's, it's really kept that impact going. And that's something that to me is more important. So, yeah. Well, I appreciate it when you uh, gave me a copy of yours and signed it after the event. And I know that other people have too. Yeah. What kind of success stories and transformations have you heard from people who have read it or seen you speak from your clients? What? Tell me about some of the breakthroughs you're creating, not just for yourself, but for your clients. Yeah. So let me an audience. So that's a I'll really good you. question. So what are some of the breakthroughs that I've been able to create for clients? And uh, I'm actually uh, on Insta right now, and and I love. The, here's my. Here's the thing with speaking. Here's my favorite part. People ask, "What's your favorite part?" My favorite part of speaking, Mario, is literally after the event when I get to speak to you, right, Mario? When I spoke with you, when I get to speak with. Everybody who comes up and shares their story and shares their pain and shares their struggles. And I have an opportunity to say, Hey, like, let's talk through it. What are your next steps? Right? Because in the, in a presentation, we talk about where you are and how to get to where you want to go. And we talk about next steps, but every, everybody personally has their own things and getting the, the DMs on Instagram and, and getting the, the interaction with people after the event, the hugs has just been amazing. So I'm going to give you two examples. I'm going to give you a business one. I spoke with a company uh, called Cineron, uh, Cineron Candela. Now it's just Candela. But uh, I went and spoke with them and they were ex struggling to hit goal, right? They were at 76% of goal. This was a, a sales team. They were at 76% of goal. And they not one team in the company had ever been above 86% of goal. And they couldn't get above 76%. I went and spoke and we did a few things, but we really, really honed in on their individual purpose, their indi the company's purpose and how it all meshed together. And then we really hit hard on goals, on individual goals, on team goals, on company goals, and not just like professional, but personal. We hit a lot on pain management. So like we have fear of failure. We have fear of rejection. We have fear of um, what people think about us. Huge one. So people, here's the thing, Mario. It's, it's not fear that holds people back. It's the pain that fear causes them that holds people back. And I truly, truly believe as human beings, we are designed and engineered to avoid fear. We just are. We're designed to, not, not fear, excuse me, pain. We're designed to avoid pain. And if we can learn how to manage that pain and how to break through that, man, the sky is absolutely the limits. So we spent some time on that and then the persistence piece, of course. And um, the next quarter, so in one quarter, they went from 76% of goal to 96% of goal. And that was one of their biggest, oh, my phone just went great. That was literally one of their absolute biggest uh, defining moments for that team and for the company. So that was really, really powerful. And just to work with um, the, the, the director and the manager and just have an opportunity to really get to know them. I'm still connected with them. I'm connected with them on social media. And it's just awesome to watch their progress and see what they're doing. And then um, uh, on, on, on the youth side of things, I spoke at, a, at an event and I had a girl come up to me uh, with with a plane and I'll never forget this. she came up and she had said that uh, you know people were telling her that she shouldn't enter this art this art fair and that it's not worth it you're not gonna win and after the event she was crying and she telling me that's but that's really truly what she wanted to do and um, she said after the presentation she decided that she's not gonna worry about anybody else thinks and she's going to go and do it. And months later, I receive 
in the mail. I still have it. I don't have it with me in my hand. Um, and it was signed by her and she said, thank you for everything. Uh, by the way, I won first place at that fair for the whole state. So that was really cool. And that, and it's just stories like that, you know, you, you have the, the, the tangible, um, I guess analytics or metrics that say, Hey, we're here, we're here. And then you have that personal side where you took somebody who completely, you know, has bad circumstances, doesn't have people that are support them and you completely shift their mindset. Think about that one hour and changes their, their life. And, um, I don't like to use the word change Mario, but I like to use the word improve and I, and it improved her life. And now I think she's going to go on to do una- some more amazing things. So those are, those are some cool stories, but I mean, I get the DMS and the messages and I put them on the site and then they, uh, they're just so amazing. And that's my absolute favorite part. Well, I am, you're bringing back the experience I had when you were on stage <laughs> and it was an awesome one. Thank you. Man. And, I'm glad you're still doing what you're doing. It's been great to watch you grow since we met and stayed connected and everything. But I can personally say where I was in my life compared to now, this is literally a dream come true because even before I started the show, you were one of the first people that said I'd be honored to. And I was like, this is kind of nuts. I I wasn't ready for it. And It was the worst year of my life. I had just lost dad and it was not fun. I was trying rebuilding. Yeah. And you were the first one I heard that year and I was going, yeah, it is possible again. It is possible again. And then just like I said in the intro, you being so down to earth and just chatting afterwards and we were talking about our books and speaking and just different stuff. It kind of reminded me like. You do this for people too. It might not feel like it right now, but you are, you know, give it another day. day. I've watched you too, Mario, like it just being connected on social media. And that's, I love being connected with people, whether they're in the audience, the person that hired me to be connected with them and watch their growth. And I've seen you and I see what you're doing with your podcast. And I, and I look and I saw before we, I, I wanted to see who you've had on your, and I was like, wow, like this is really impressive. Mario is I, I, I was extremely impressed and I watched, I've watched you grow and it's, it's just awesome. And congratulations to you. First of all, it's, you're, you're doing awesome. And I'm, I'm go I'm honored to be a part of it. Well, I do appreciate it because all I've wanted to do is reach more people like you. And this was another conduit and it ju- it just clicked for various reasons. And I have no doubt. And there's someone you could ask later that night after I saw you I was talking about you the next 24, 48 hours, <laughs> showed them your book and everything. And I was a little upset because they were supposed to see you and they weren't there in the daytime. We went back at night, but it set the tone for all of last year yeah, without a doubt in my mind. And I do appreciate it. So, so enjoying I- this now. <laughs> and um, for anyone that is – this is their first experience with Richie, I think you're seeing that. He's awesome and you should definitely check him out in person at one of his events if uh, you can. Let's. T- uh, I'm going to go back to the book before I ask you about videos. But for anyone wanting a copy of the book, where's the best place they can get one at? Yeah, absolutely. So a, a great place, easy place that you can go is Amazon. Just type in In Spite of the Odds. You can just Google In Spite of the Odds and it will come up. Um, if you want a signed copy – the, ble- the best place to go is just uh, richiecantardisi.com and you can go to shop and there's a, a quick little order you can go through there and then um, submit some of your information and then I'll be able to write you a personal message, sign the book and ship it to you that way too. Excellent. So you're talking about the books and the transformations. Let's talk about the video that we uh, see each other doing. How has video made an impact on your business? Yeah, I mean, I think video is huge, and I look at I look at a few things. One is obviously nobody is going to hire me uh, without seeing video footage. So that's number one. I think the other big impact is just being able to take presentations, hundreds of presentations, and cut up those presentations and be able to share them and share them. So you're I'm trying to constantly find ways to inspire and help other people. Right. That's that's the bottom line. Right. So that's another way that way that it's helped me and something that I've kind of done and dabbled in, but I'm really honing that in is obviously we have the offline stage, which is where you saw me at 
uh, an event uh, speaking. And I think that's awesome. But one thing that I, I really haven't uh, done a lot of, and I'm going to moving forward, and I've done them before. I think I've done maybe five to 10 podcasts, but I think podcasts are awesome. I think um, summit online summits, but just have the ability online to be able to connect with people and share insights and share things that will help them in their life is another great way to connect with people. So this is kind of a, a, a newer area that I'm really tackling in on. So the videos obviously are great on the website, the videos sharing content, and then this video uh, side of things like podcasts and summits, online summits, where you can really uh, put together some great content and share with people where they can watch them in their pajamas, right? Yeah, it's great. I, I tell people all the time that we have all these unlimited resources. We got super high speed internet now. Yep. And you can reach anyone from all over the world. Yeah. One of my goals with the show is to have uh, people fly people in in studio, hang out in person. You know that would be awesome. Yeah. The downside is that's a lot of time. It's a lot of travel. It's logistics. This, that, the other thing. Anyone can grab a phone or a webcam. Yeah. And connect with anyone around the world. And I don't think people realize how powerful that is. Even five, ten years ago, you'd be spending thousands of dollars an hour just for bandwidth, let alone the professional equipment. 100%. You know, what I learned for television in 2005 for broadcast, <laughs> the cameras were – the cheap one was 35 grand. That's not like – Entry level by any stretch for even a big business. No. Some of them were eighty five thousand dollars. Now it's pick up your phone and it's in your pocket. You can talk to ten thousand people. It's pretty cool. It's. I mean, I mean, you look at people like Pat Flynn and these guys. I mean, they got in one podcast. They're able to connect and impact hundreds of that, like a stadium, Alabama football, one hundred two thousand people in one podcast. So it's pretty cool. It's really powerful. It's pretty amazing. I was talking to him a couple of weeks ago, and he's doing uh, some big things with uh, video in his new studio. I bet. I mean, I know he's <laughs> – yeah. There's so much you can do. I mean, that's a whole other thing, but um, I'd be happy to connect you with someone for virtual summits also. Yeah. If that's something you're looking to do. There's so much potential, and I appreciate you for sharing that with 100%. us. 100%. So we're going to jump to the imperfect action round right after we thank our sponsor. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five-plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with the imperfect action round. Richie, are you ready to take imperfect action? Let's do it. So the first question I have for you, 60-second rapid fire, is what is the fastest path to the cash? The fastest path to what? What is the fastest path to the cash? <laughs> uh, impact. Give. Impact and give. If I were to give, put it in two words, make a big impact and give. I like it. Number two, what is the biggest problem you see your prospects making and the fastest way they can fix it? The biggest problem that they're what? What is the, what is the biggest problem you see your prospects making and the fastest way they can fix it? Uh, developing their, their younger workforce into um, the best versions of them into peak performers, into all-stars and the fastest way to create, uh, all-stars peak performers and impact players is by following the performance booster framework. I've seen it over and over. It's much faster and it's much easier and it's a proven system. Number three, what is the best way to maximize customer lifetime value? So just keeping customers long-term, I think the biggest thing is, is staying connected with them. I think that's a big thing that I've noticed is the more I'm staying connected to my customers, whether that's social media or providing them value in different ways, that's how you're going to keep them. Whether it was with the gym or it's with speaking, whatever I can do to keep providing them value long-term and help them in different areas as a as a consultant or a coach or just someone providing them value, uh, that to me is super powerful and people are going to consistently want more as long as you're actually helping them. 
It's a good answer and it segues into uh, what you were telling me before we went live. Don't you have a little gift you want to give Expert Authority World? Yes, I do. Of course I have a gift. Come on. Um, I absolutely do. And so um, what what you can do is you can go to relentlessrichie.com slash booster. And what I have there is for people, for organizations who want to engage and develop their younger workforce um, into peak performers who never want to leave is the perform not only the performance booster framework, but actually how to go through and implement it and create those younger all-stars. So that'll all be there. Fantastic. I'll make sure that that makes it into the show notes. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Last question I got for you. What is one of the best books you could recommend? The best books? Okay. Uh, Getting Things Done by David Allen. I, I've got so many inspirational books, like so many amazing books, right? But there's one book that literally, and I know it's a productivity book and it's not a performance. And I, there's so many great ones, but that book, when I read that book, allowed me to get what most people get done in one day, I can get done, or excuse me, what was most people to get done in two days, I can get done in one day. Um, following getting things done, their system, their process by David Allen completely changed how I function and work in, in so many different areas. They're like, how do you, how do you uh, own a gym, but you're on the road so much? Like, how is that humanly possible? Well, read Getting Things Done by David Allen and you'll see exactly how. That's fantastic. And it's all about that time leveraging, right? It is, man. Like we, everybody has the same amount of hours. Every, I don't care who you are. You have the same amount of hours. Yeah, you might have more people on your team and different things, but there was a time I had nobody on my team, right? So um, I, I really, truly, like all the, I think the mindset is super critical. There's so many areas that are critical, but that book in alone, if we're talking about books, completely changed the way that I, I function and operate in so many different ways. So highly recommend it. Well, I appreciate you for sharing that with us and for sharing everything you have. It's been an absolute pleasure and I'm excited to showcase you here. Thanks for sharing. Absolutely, Mario. Really, really honored to be a part of the show. Well, I greatly appreciate it. And I know Expert Authority World is getting a lot out of this. So there you have it. We have another great episode. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Right. Here we go. We have another great episode. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow? Whatever. It's tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it's tomorrow. I'm just going to leave this, I think. All right. This has been great. This is fun. I'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day and God bless. All right. See you later, Mario. Why every business needs a book, including yours. Would you like to save five plus hours with every prospect, generate more leads and profit in your business now? Visit businessbookchecklist.com and learn how you can implement this in your business today. Hey, thanks for listening to today's episode. I hope you got a lot out of it. I know I sure did. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to subscribe to the show and also be sure to check out eainterviews.com for complete show notes, the full interview video experience, links to the resources we mentioned, and more. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you tomorrow.